we say when the people will lead the leaders will follow so get after the elders and pastors in your church lay people and tell them pastor we want to start a christian school in our church and this will go a long way to meeting the needs Welcome, everybody, to Conversations That Matter. I'm Alex Newman for the New American Magazine. We have a returning guest today. His name is Lieutenant Colonel E. Ray Moore. He's retired out of the service. He's got more than 40 years in ministry as a campus pastor, a minister, an army chaplain, a director of a Christian ministry. Uh, he is, among other things, president of Frontline Ministries. Um, they focus on prayer, revival, and Christian education. It's been around for uh, 25 years, more than 25 years. It's also the founder and the director of the Exodus Mandate Project, an effort to get as many Christian children out of the government schools as possible. Uh, he's chairman of the Education Education Initiative. It's an alliance of uh, dozens of ministries, a lot of them focused on education. And he's the chairman of Public School Exit, launched in 2020. He's the author of Let My Children Go, uh, co-authored with his wife, uh, The Promise of Jonadab, Building a Christian Family Legacy in a Time of Cultural Decline. It's, an, it's a wonderful, wonderful book. Uh, he's also the executive director of the 2011 award-winning film Indoctrination by Colin Gunn. He is the scriptwriter and executive producer of Escaping Common Core, Setting Our Children Free, uh, and he's done many, many other things as well. Ray, uh, welcome to the program. Uh, I wanted to bring you back today. Uh, we, we've published your work in The New American. Uh, you, you've been sounding the alarm about what's happening in government schools since before a lot of us were born. And um, now you're sounding the alarm about vouchers, um, government funding for homeschooling and Christian schools. I actually just quoted you in, a, in an article I did for The New American about that. But let's start at the beginning. Um, what is the school choice movement and why are you so concerned about it? Well, it seems to be and there's a dark side to the term school choice. And you might say a happy side, but the dark side is so threatening to us now that I've really dropped the word school choice out of my vocabulary and I'm using instead of that education freedom uh, because school choice the mechanism most often promoted to bring it about is the tax funded voucher and that would be financial aid coming from governments into our private Christian and home schools and we believe that would be deadly. Just picture for a moment when the handcuffs, when the when you reach for the money, the handcuffs go on. That's handcuffs there around my wrist. And so it's a threat to uh, our autonomy and our freedom. So we oppose the voucher for that reason, primarily. And uh, unfortunately, it looks like a lot of Republicans and conservatives are kind of hopping on the bandwagon. Um, you know, wh why do you think they don't see this danger, Ray? Or, or, or what do you think is going on? I mean, do do some of the people see the danger, understand the danger, or what's going on here? Um, do. Uh, tragically, uh, I would say conservatives, uh, Christian right, uh, homeschoolers, we would normally be more policy, politically allied with conservatives and many cases the Republicans and the Democrats on most policy issues, say the life issue, uh, th those kinds of questions, family values. But in this case, uh, our friends are a threat to us because they're the ones, the Republicans are the main ones pushing the voucher. It's a very odd policy alignment. And uh, I'm against the voucher because it threatens the autonomy and the freedom of private Christian home education. Democrats are against the voucher because they think it threatens the monopoly of public education. And in fact, it really doesn't, but they, uh, they think it does. So we are in a very awkward situation where we're having to break ranks with people we have normally been allied with in the past. So that's why it's difficult to explain to people. Many Republicans go for it because they think we need more money in the private school system. So therefore, let the government fund it. No, no bad idea. What do you do, Ray, with the argument that, uh, you know, the public schools are so bad 
Uh, we have to do anything and everything possible to get because I, I hear this from a lot of people who are supporting this, who are, I, you know, I know them to be well intentioned. They say, look, the public schools are so bad. We have to do anything and everything possible to get the children out. Uh, and the reality is because of the cost, uh, a lot of parents aren't going to pull their kids out until the government gives them money. Um, how do you respond to that? That is the number one objection uh, to what we're saying. I mean, so you, you've raised the, the ultimate question because pragmatism will take over at times like that. And people say, well, you know, it's not ideal, but we need the money. Uh, our answer basically is to try to engage the church and private associations. Uh, to do their do their job, do their duty. And there is a great improvement in that area in the last three to five years since the pandemic. And so I'm not willing to kill the goose that lays the golden egg just because not everybody at this moment can avail themselves of a private education through the voucher. Not willing to do that. And there is some evidence that when uh, school choice and the voucher becomes the default position that not everybody takes advantage of it. They don't they don't necessarily come over to private education and homeschooling. But what it will do is it will bring uh, control and change in the private school system. So I think we have to stand our ground and give this time to work itself out. I do believe right now today uh, that probably two thirds of all families, uh, maybe even three quarters, could afford some form of free market, private, and home education. Home education is ridiculously inexpensive. Now you have to pay for your curriculum, and if you join a program, you have to pay for that. So you you know nothing's free. Anything and you typically free. have to live on one income also, yeah, right. right? Which I think yeah. for a lot of modern families is a little bit yeah. more difficult, huh? Yeah, that that it is difficult. So what we are having to do at the same time we're trying to resist the voucher, we're having to challenge churches and pastors to step up and engage on Christian schools and homeschooling, and that is improving. You know, you and Dran Reese with the public school exit are speaking at Paul Blair's Liberty Pastors Conferences, and I think there are hundreds of pastors that have attended those events, and many of them are in the process of starting up Christian schools. It's not a perfect answer, but it's the best we can do at this time. Yep. Yeah. Um, all right, folks, we're going to go to a quick break. And when we get back, we're going to talk more with Ray Moore about how to deal with this when it comes to your state capital. If you're in a Republican state, it may be there already. And also uh, how to talk to your pastor and maybe the elders at your church about this uh, critical issue. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, parents, listen up. We've all seen the countless examples of how radical, radical leftists have been destroying American schools. It's no longer just about the terrible math and reading levels. Now, radical left teachers birthed from liberal universities are forcing gender indoctrination in, ch in kindergarten. They're teaching lessons on white guilt. Freedom Project Academy has perfected live on online learning over the course of a decade. I get a ton of great feedback about this program, a ton. They're built on Judeo-Christian values, a classical curriculum. What does that mean? It means they're taught, your children are taught, taught the way that the founding generations of the country. My own son Noah did Freedom Project Academy for uh, several years uh, when he was younger. The more we tell our friends about these things, the more people will get on board. And I, and I believe that we can be the catalyst to some real change. We must save the West. Our way of life and our culture is under attack. And because of patriots like you and your project, I have optimism for the future. Ray, uh, as you know, um, many Republican states, if not most Republican states, are either considering this issue this year or debating this issue. Uh, some of them, like Arizona last year, took the plunge and, and passed uh, basically what they're describing as universal ESAs, um, where every child, I guess, becomes eligible for this. Uh, the state of Florida was trying to do that, and they, and they may still end up passing something along those lines. Uh, what do you say to, to folks out there in Republican states? How should they be approaching their legislators about this? What do you say to Republican legislators who are on the fence? They're not quite sure what to do with this. Uh, what should be an appropriate strategy for Christians who do believe in getting kids out of the public school but are concerned about the uh, the voucher system? One, one thing that 
we've done in our ministry is that we've created a booklet and I'll hold it up. And you've actually got a chapter in here, if you, as you know, vouchers, shekels with shackles. And these are 10 brief articles stand alone. And you have one, I have two that explain the threat of the voucher to private free market Christian and home education. Very, we've got three, we've got a lot of scholars that write for it. Uh, D- Diane Douglas, a former superintendent of public education in Arizona, has got a chapter. Um, three of our writers have PhDs. Uh, s- several are attorneys, and uh, and then you're a, a journalist and I'm a, a preacher. It's very, very well done, and we're getting making a lot of headway with it. I'll give you one good story. I think there are a lot of people that are for the voucher today that are people of goodwill. And if we present reasoned biblical uh, and constitutional arguments to them, they could repent and relent and, and reverse themselves. And I'm seeing that quite a bit, but you have to be able to present the arguments. And this is a, one of the best tools that we have. And if your audience wants to get a copy, a digital copy, they can contact my office at exodusmandate at gmail.com, exodusmandate at gmail.com, and ask for the digital uh, version of our booklets on the voucher. Let me give you one success story. I can't be too specific, but there was a writer who is with a good Christian publisher, recently wrote a book. He was in public schools teaching in a large major city in the United States. And he was a Christian and he came to the conclusion that it was not possible for a Christian teacher to stay in that environment. And he was wrote sort of a whistleblower book. And a, a friend of ours was asked to endorse it. And he read it. He said it was just a wonderful book, something that we all could endorse. Except in the final chapter, this man came out for school choice and for the voucher to be the mechanism for families to get out of the public school system. So our mutual friend, Alex, and we won't call his name today, um, was asked to do an endorsement. And he said, I wanted to endorse it, but I just could not because of this serious flaw. So he sent a copy of our booklet, Vouchers, Shekels with Shackles, to this writer. And he changed his position, reversed himself, and said, oh, I had made a mistake. And he withdrew the last chapter and had rewritten the last chapter so that our friend Alex could endorse the book. So that's the one example of a person who was open to reason, a man of goodwill who changed his mind. So we think this booklet is having an effect to, to help that about. And then another one, which you know about, and you wrote about this, I think, in the New American issue coming up, we commissioned a paper by two eminent constitutional scholars called government-funded vouchers in danger biblically faithful Christian education. It's a legal analysis looking at the law, primarily the Blaine Amendments. A lot of people don't know what they are, but they're embedded in 37 state constitutions. And they say that you cannot give state money, government money, uh, to sectarian religious institutions. And that's also true in my state, the state of Virginia. I think there's one in Florida. And so it's unconstitutional. Uh, you cannot give direct money to religious institutions. Now, sadly, that was done in the 1870s to, for Catholics to keep them from getting uh, government money for their parochial schools. And it has a, a dark history there. But today, because it's a, a good policy. It protects private Christian schools, Protestant schools, and Catholic schools. So we're urging the uh, acceptance of the Blaine Amendment as a way of protecting and putting a firewall around Christian schools and homeschooling. Uh, in the last couple of minutes we have left, Ray, uh, what is your message to Christians who are uh, in church? I mean, what should they be saying to their pastor? What should their pastor be saying? What should the elders of the church be doing or the priest uh, for the case of Catholics or the rabbi uh, for Jews? What What is the role of um, these community leaders, these faith leaders in um, in this whole issue with education? There are about 100,000 uh, conservative 
churches in America and about 94,000 public schools. So we have one for one. We have the facilities. Uh, we have budgets. We don't need to build a building. We can start schools overnight. Now, it would take three, six months or a year to start a school. So the opportunity is there. There's just a lack of will. We've written a pamphlet called Pastors Taking Cover, Moral Courage for the Pulpit. And we're trying to get laymen, elders, deacons to go to their pastors and say, it's time to start a school in our church. We can meet this need almost overnight. I think it would take three to five years to reach a critical mass, but it can be done. So we say, when the people will lead, the leaders will follow. So get after the elders and pastors in your church, lay people, and tell them, Pastor, we want to start a Christian school in our church. And this will go a long way to meeting the need. Excellent. Uh, and Ray, uh, what's the best way to find you, your organizations? Give us your websites and um, a little bit of information on the ministries you work with and lead. Okay, the main one for this program would be Exodus Mandate at gmail.com. That's the web, the uh, email address. And the webpage is exodusmandate.org. And if they will contact us at Exodus Mandate, at gmail.com, we will send a copy of this booklet and also vouchers, shekels with shackles, in which you have a chapter, Alex. Very good. And then um, uh, your your the ministry that you serve as chairman of, uh, Christ EDU, okay. uh, give us a little bit of information on that and how people can find it. That's an alliance of 20 Christian education ministries or organizations, and I'm the national chairman, and that webpage is Christ edu.org christ edu.org and then of course you and i serve on the board together with public school exit.com which frankly is one of the more dynamic programs of its kind in the country right now and you and i are happily serving with dran reese on that program excellent and that's uh, uh, public school exit.com yep and uh Ray, just in uh, 30 seconds, you know, we, we've we've had you on to talk about this before, but uh, give us the 30 second version. Why do you think Christian parents need to get their children out of public schools? Well, the main reason is the scriptures command and assign the education of children to the family and the church or the private associations, not government. The secondary reason, which is so terrible, is that the schools have become positively dangerous and harmful, and it's just not safe in any basis to leave your children there. Let me say real quickly, thank the Lord for John Burt Society and the New American Magazine for being willing to cover these types of topics. They've always been a wonderful organization, but they've become more vital for the future of our country than ever before. Very good. And uh, folks, if you haven't seen those special reports we did, uh, Rescuing Our Children and then Save the Children, uh, get some copies. Uh, you can at least get them in PDF or you can order stacks of the print magazine, uh, breaking down all the different things that are going on in the public schools. Ray Moore, thank you so much for joining us today. Honored to have you as always. Really appreciate it. And hopefully we'll get you back soon for more. Uh, folks, I'm Alex Newman. This is Conversations That Matter. Thanks for watching. Till next time, God bless you all. Here's the news, Dad. Is it, son? Is it? What about this one, Dad? Nope. It's hard to tell what's real and what's fake these days. There's just too much baloney out there. At the New American, they cut through the baloney and give me the truth. The truth is hard to find, but the New American has it. Check it out at thenewamerican.com.